Assalamu alaikum Dear students welcome to learner competitive exam today we will discuss pakistan affair challenges to sovereignty of pakistan dear student first of all we discuss what is a state or sovereign state montevideo convention on the right and duties of state 1933 defines states as the state as a person of international law should possess the following qualification a permanent population defined territory a government and a capacity to enter into relation with the other state or sovereignty then introduction to sovereignty the word sovereignty is derived from the latin word superenas superenas which means supremacy or superior power sovereignty is about the power to make laws and the ability to rule effectively then we discuss different definition according to different scholars jean bodin the first writer to apply the term defined it as the supreme power of the state over citizens and subjects unrestrained by law hugo grotius who wrote half a century later defined it as the supreme political power vested in him whose acts are not subject to any other and whose will cannot be overridden jelinek defined as the characteristic of the state by virtue of which it cannot be legally bound except by its own will or limited by any other power than itself dugit says that sovereignty according to the dominant theory in france is the commanding power of the state it is the will of the nation organized in the state it is the right to give unconditional orders to all individuals in the territory of the state then characteristic of sovereignty first of all permanence ke ek state ki permanency honi chahiye ek state permanent honi chahiye and then universality usko universal taur pe us uski recognition honi chahiye then exclusiveness by exclusiveness is meant that there cannot be two sovereign in one independent state मेन उसका एक ही उसकी स्टेट हो उसमें स्टेट विद स्टेट ना हो इन अलाइनेबिलिटी बाय इन अबाइलिटी वी मीन दैट स्टेट कैन नॉट पार्ट विद इट्स सोवरेंटी सोवरेंटी इज द लाइफ एंड सोल ऑफ द स्टेट एंड इट कैन नॉट बी अलाइनेटेड विद विदाउट डिस्ट्रॉइंग द स्टेट इट्स एंड देन इंडिविजुअबिलिटी सोवरेंटी कैन नॉट बी डिवाइडेड यूनिटी होनी चाहिए उसमें एब्सोल्यूटनेस होनी चाहिए और ओरिजिनलिटी होनी चाहिए kind of sovereignty ki baat kare to first internal sovereignty which is normally understood as possessing two distinct aspects internal and external sovereignty within the national sphere is known as internal a state which possesses internal sovereignty is one which has the authority and ability to exercise command over its society in this situation there are no alternative sites of authority within the nation then external sovereignty external sovereignty concern the relationship between a sovereign power and other state the term external sovereignty is employed by some writers to mean nothing more than the freedom of the state from subjugation to or control by foreign state then normal or real sovereignty in ancient times many state has monarchies and their rulers were monarchs they wielded absolute power and the senates were quite powerless and enjoy nominal sovereignty at that time monarchs exercised real sovereignty and regard as real sovereign for example king was sovereign and hence were all powerful in england before 15th century in ussr before the 18th and 19th century and in france before 1789 then legal sovereignty is the conception of sovereignty in terms of law that is sovereignty as the supreme law making authority legal sovereign therefore is that determine determinate authority which is able to express in legal form the highest command of the state that power which can override the prescription of the given law the principle of morality the mandate of public opinion for instance the parliament is the legal authority to exercise legal sovereignty political sovereignty behind the sovereign which the lawyer recognizes there is another sovereignty to which the legal sovereign must bow 
This sovereign is called political sovereignty. In the narrower sense, the electoral electorate constitutes the political sovereign. Yet, in a wider sense, it may be said to be the whole mass of population, including every person who contributes to modeling of public opinion, whatever he is vote or not. Then, popular sovereignty means the masses are con contrasted with the power of the individual ruler of the class. It implies manhood suffrage with. Each individual have only one vote and the control of the legislature by representative of the people. Then, de jure sovereignty is the legal sovereignty and it has foundation in law. Its attribute is the right to govern and command obedience. As a matter of fact, it may not be actual sovereign. Then, de facto sovereignty. De facto or actual sovereignty is the sovereignty which is actually able to make its will prevail though it may be without legal basis. That person or body of person who actually exercise power and who for the time being is able to enforce obedience or to whose command voluntary obedience is given by the bulk of the people is called the de facto sovereign. The criterion of sovereignty is actual obedience to command. Then de recto sovereignty. De recto or moral sovereignty is the sovereignty which is actually able to make its will prevail on the moral basis. That person or body of person who actually exercises power derives authority from moral or ethical consideration. Then emergence of the state sovereignty. Westphalian sovereignty is the principle of international laws that each nation has sovereign over its territory and democratic affairs to the exclusion of all external power on the principle of non-interference in another economic country's domestic affair and each state is equal in international law. It is often argued that the appearance of state sovereignty was cemented by the Treaty of Westphalia 1648 which established the so-called Westphalian system. Then Sovereignty and International Court of Justice, a case study of US Nicaragua military, military and paramilitary activities in and against Nicaragua 1986. U.S. Nicaragua has taken significant step toward establishing a totalitarian communist dictatorship. So, this is a case study where U.S. has interfered or intervened. You can see this case ko aap se study kar sakte hain. So, if you study this case, you can study this case. So, if you study United Nations, United Charter Article 2nd, the organization and its member in pursuit of the purpose stated in Article 1 shall act in accordance with the following principle. Organization is based on the principle of sovereign equality of all its members. All members shall refrain in their international relations from the threat or use of force against the territorial integrity or political independence. Nothing contained in the present charter shall authorize the United Nations to intervene in matters which are essentially within the democratic jurisdiction of any state or shall require the members to submit such matters to settlement under the present charter, but this principle shall not prejudice the application of enforcement measure under chapter 7. UN Charter Article 51 Nothing in the present charter shall impair the inherent right of individual or collective self-defense if an armed attack occurs against a member of the United Nations. Then, sovereignty and international law. State sovereignty is defined, regulated, and limited by international law. Sovereignty is an innate quality of state presupposed by and generative of international law. Argument relying on the latter notion of sovereignty are typically used to delimit the reach of international law. Then, sovereignty and globalization. The fast Interdependent spread of open society, open economy, and open technology infrastructure. Globalization is a decentered process that occurs at an unprecedented speed. It is dynamic and fluid. Today's speed, impact, scope, depth, and cost of globalization are unparalleled. Globalization is not the exclusive cause of trans sovereign problems but facilitates their spread. Trans sovereign problems constitute the negative aspect of globalization. Then globalization debate proponent, proponent says globalization makes the world smaller and bring people closer together. More 
globalization is answer to global problems such as poverty, crime, nor south gap, etc. Then opponents skeptics say globalization is neo-imperialism driven by a few dominant states and major corporations. Then Kuzimano Love says globalization has both positive and negative consequences. We must harness the positive consequences. Then trans sovereign issues are the ones that ignore the usual borders of countries for some reason or another. Airborne disease are the trans sovereign problem because they don't just stop one, they reach the border of a country, they can cross over into another country. Terrorist groups, big corporation, the UN and the Red Cross and other NGOs are trans sovereign entities. How can trans-sovereign problem be addressed? Globalization challenges state sovereignty and its capacity to deal with trans-sovereign challenges. Consequently, trans-sovereign problems attain a wider reach and impact at an unparalleled pace. Most challenges today arise from weak rather than strong states. Trans-sovereign problems often weaken state authority further promoting a loss of sovereignty and in some cases failed state. Then move toward challenges of trans-sovereign problems. Unilateralism does not work. Different actors have different interests. Problems often located in economic and social arenas. Inter mystic politics boundaries. Traditional state function. Then failed state. What are the failed state? Failed state intensify the trans-sovereign problem of global terrorism. Organized crime, refugees, flow, disease, poverty, nuclear trafficking, and weapon mass destruction. Failed states are a magnet for NGOs and IGOs which attempt to alleviate the situation. This further weakens state sovereignty. You can see failed state index 2016. Then a catch 22 sovereignty and trans sovereign problems. New security dilemma, globalization plus weak states plus trans sovereign problem is equal to new security dilemma. Challenges how to protect against trans sovereign problems and weak states with a response that prohibits weak states from getting weaker and intensifies trans sovereign threats. Then Pakistan national building and sovereignty. National building definition, the enhanced capacity of indigenous nation to realize their own cultural, educational, economic, environmental and political objectives through fundamental, foundational action of their own design and initiation. Then successful nation building, what is the pattern? The sovereignty, attitude, capable institutions, cultural match and then leadership. Pakistan and challenges to sovereignty. As we know, Challenges to sovereignty, external and internal. External forces of globalization, war on terror, trans sovereign problem, dependence on IFIs, internal challenges, population growth, limited resources, corruption, economic degradation, crisis of authority, interstate conflicts, subnational movements, crisis of economic development, response to sovereignty challenges, force, sanction, Cyber attacks, acceptance and then diplomacy. Challenges to sovereignty, globalization continues to have an increasingly negative impact on the sovereign right of individual, nation, state. There exists a large of, a range of global institutions like IMF, World Bank and Asian Development Bank. National sovereignty is compromised by international agreements or treaties from 1945 to 21st May 1996, the United Nations. Sovereignty is also challenged at the doctrinal level by powerful and persuasive ideas such as universal human rights. Then evolutionary account phase first from 1947 to 1958. Some of the most important challenges to sovereignty of Pakistan like military weakness, economic weakness, political instability, Kashmir dispute, lack of capable human resource, demise of Qaed Azam and Liaquat Ali Khan. CETO and SANTO, proactive role of hostile intelligence, 
agencies like ra mossad cia then from phase second from 1958 to 1977 political instability in the west and east pakistan martial law kashmir dispute wars with india emergence of bengali nationalism increase in provincialism due to one unit emergence of trans sovereign issues like disease polio aids and terrorism then poverty and illiteracy then phase third from 1977 to 1999 rampant corruption and bad governance economic vulnerabilities and dependence on IMF and World Bank political instability and political rivalry islamization sectarianism and orthodoxism indian cultural invasion kashmir dispute civil military differences martial law basic democracy russian invasion of afghanistan and start of cold war iranian revolution nuclearization of india on 11th and 13 may 1998 india again threatens pakistan sovereignty then phase 4 from 1999 to 2008 economic vulnerabilities and dependence on imf and world bank political instability circular debt and power shortage civil military differences cargill takeover suspension of the constitution 1973 us war on terror and use of pakistan's air base by the us planes terrorism in pakistan nato supply routes un malarium development goals us drone attacks in pakistan then from 2004 to 2015 about 3200 pakistanis have been killed in us drone strikes phase 5 from 2008 to date most important challenges to sovereignty of pakistan are economic vulnerabilities and dependency on imf and world bank rampant corruption foreign debt exceeding us dollar 7 billion civil military difference after bath operation memo gate scandal energy crisis 18th amendment confined sovereignty of the state us drone attacks in pakistan and now do more pantra terrorism in pakistan sino pak economic corridor indian fueled insurgency in balochistan fata as kulbhushan yadav then you can see now we condemn us intervention in pakistan bin laden killings as they say aaj bhi soma zinda hai we will defend pakistan stay away usa then iran pakistan kalesh current situation factor strengthening sovereignty of pakistan clearly defining all the vital important and peripheral national interest economic strength consistency of policies civil military consensus democratic dispensation good governance and accountability pragmatic foreign policy based on safeguarding national interest internal stability external deterrence foreign policy based on win win solution supremacy of the united nation in international relations bipolar world or we can say multipolar world policy making institutes like iss nspp should be strengthened stopping us drone attacks and any form of external aggression against the people of pakistan within pakistan enhanced role of international criminal international court of justice in case of violation of state sovereignty tit for tat policy bilateral ties with neighbors resolution of kashmir dispute in the light of un resolution realization of the fact that pakistan is a nuclear power supremacy of the parliament in all policy making cause leading principle faith unity and discipline to join global war on terror was clearly compromise on sovereignty of pakistan yes or no dear student class discussion discussion ke liye 
ड्यू टू इकोनॉमिक वेलनरेबिलिटीज एंड जियो स्ट्रेटेजिक कंसिडरेशन पाकिस्तान विल ऑलवेज कंप्रोमाइज हर सोवरेनिटी एट द हैंड्स ऑफ द यूएस एग्री और डिसएग्री डियर स्टूडेंट ये सोवरेनिटी के रिलेटेड कंप्लीट लेक्चर था इंशाल्लाह नया टॉपिक साथ फिर मिलते हैं तब तक अपना ख्याल रखिएगा अल्लाह हाफिज़